about it. Sure. All right, we're gonna kind of go through some basics here in the beginning for the first timers. We had a couple. Right. So what is pain, right? First slide, right off the bat. Um, well, pain's like the check engine light going on in your car. I'm gonna use car references a bit here too. And uh, I like to use um, recipes, like ingredients and recipes too. So you'll hear me talking about that a little bit later. Um, but what is pain? So the thing that I really tell my clients is to be open and curious and, you know, about their bodies. Well, why do I have pain today? What, what could have created that in my lifestyle, my habits, my sports that I play? Um, you know, like the lady was saying um, earlier, how she mouses with the right hand and she, you know, uses her right arm in a different way than her left arm, you know? So how, how does that relate to pain? How do, how do I get pain as a result of that, right? Um, over time, your body's gonna build up these compensations, these imbalances from using the body one-sided versus the other. Um, and, you know, there becomes an imbalance in the system because of the imbalance of the muscles, right side versus left side or front of the body versus the back of the body. And then pain pops up. And pain is really just an indicator, like a light's flashing on the dash and it's saying, hey, pay attention here. There's something out of alignment in the car, out of alignment in the system that needs to be addressed holistically, right? You need to plug it in, figure out what's going on and then treat that area. But that's the car. Body's definitely different, right? But the most important thing about the car and the body that's the same is, hey, the alignment, right? The alignment's important. You don't want to be um, changing the, the tires on the car all the time if the alignment's off. So if you keep changing the tires and changing the tires, but you never address the alignment, then you're going to spend a lot of money on tires, okay? It isn't until you actually get the alignment fixed in the car that you're, not, you're going to stop wearing down those tires and the, the root of the problem has been fixed, okay? So when we're talking about a Goscu, um, we're talking about what is at that root cause, you know, what is the muscular imbalance? What is the systemic holistic imbalance that's happening? And we we use, you know, the posture photos and the alignment and those, uh, muscle testing and movement to help figure that out. Um, and every body is different. Every body has been through a different lifestyle, a different job. They're a different age. They have different, different genetics, all the things, right? So when you come in and you do have your posture photos taken, um, or you take a look at your posture photos, um, it's a snapshot in time of everything you've done up until now muscularly, um, and that you've taken in from your environment, right? Um, so, you know, five people the same age, um, the same height, the same weight, the same pain, like let's say they all have knee pain. Well, they all did something different in their life, right? To get up to that point where they had knee pain. Some of their posture imbalances might be similar, but a lot of them are going to be different. So, you know, the one size fits all approach really doesn't apply to the human body because every body is different, right? Um, we all have muscles and we all have bones. We all have ligaments and tendons and organs and all those things, but everything we've done is different up until the point where hey, we need help. We're not quite sure what that check engine light means. And we don't have the tools and the knowledge and the information to help get ourselves out of this hole that we've created. Um, we know that there should be something. We want something. There's something there. We just, we don't know. We just don't have that knowledge yet. And so that's where a lot of people come to us is, you know, um, because they had to stop working or they, you know, they, they aren't as functional. They can't be as active anymore, right? Um, so when you look at this house and you think, oh gosh, it's, you know, it's rotated, it's offset, it's leaning, right? How safe is it? How stable is it? If a storm came in, it wouldn't stand up very well, right? Would you go in? So same thing with the, the human body, you know, we're going to look at the way our posture aligns with itself and we're going to say, okay, well, how has our posture deviated over time as we have gotten older and done different things in our life? Maybe we played 
you know, racket sports, which is a one-sided sport or golf or tennis, right? And we've created imbalances over time, or we had accidents or injuries or things like that, um, that create muscle imbalances over time. And that's how you get the poor posture over time. It's a faulty relationship of the various parts of the body, which produces increased strain on the supporting structures in which there's less efficient balance of the body over its base of support. So, and I think we can all like raise our hand and say probably like, we know what bad posture or poor posture looks like, right? We can all like fake it or, hey, maybe when we look in the mirror, we're like, oh, wow, like my posture is really slumped. I'm getting that kind of hump on the back of my neck. Um, you know, I noticed that there's certain things that are happening in my body that weren't before. Um, and I feel less balanced. I feel in state unstable. People can identify with that if you raise your hand a little bit there in the reactions, put your thumb up. Um, and then, I mean, I know I'm, I'm always out in, in public and I get so jazzed and excited. You'll laugh at me about this, but when I see people with a really good posture, straight knees and feet that point straight ahead and they're walking up straight and their arms are swinging in a straight line. And I mean, I will like turn my head and just get so excited and, and very, um, you know, happy about, wow, look at this person. They are doing all the right things. Look at their running posture. Look at the way they're sitting and walking and moving. Like I get super jazzed about that. Um, cause it's really, it's not very common anymore. We just don't see it in society because what we do is, as our lifestyles and our activity levels are so sedentary at this point especially for our children, right? Um, it's way less active than it was for our parents and grandparents. Um, and the younger generations are having more issues, more severe, serious issues at a younger age than our parents and our grandparents did, which is sad. I'm working with a lot more children right now, which is great. Um, I like to be seeing kids, but also parents and hey, adults too, being on the preventative side of things versus the 911 emergency, I'm in so much pain, I can't move. I really need to come in now. Let's wait till that point. I mean, you know, that's not fun to be there. Um, getting people to come in on the proactive side is just ugh, icing on the cake. Um, so, you know, your body is designed to move and be functional and active. And if you're out of alignment, you have that poor posture, your ligaments, tendons, bones, muscles, everything, you can't coordinate right to left, front to back as well. So over time, you become, you know, maybe you were, you used to run and now it hurts too much. So you got to walk. Oh, well, now you can't walk. Now you're swimming or, oh, I used to ride a bike. Well, now I, now I just walk or now I golf, but you know, it hurts to walk. I ride the cart. You know, you start to limit your activities as your posture, you know, kind of goes downhill and the function decreases over time, right? If you're not in alignment, then it's hard to get things done. Your body has to work 10 times harder. Um, so the, the quick fixes in society, which are you know readily available anytime you'd like them, um, are medications, surgeries. You, know, you can go on vacation and take a break. Stress plays a big part in pain. Like someone said earlier, nutrition and food, inflammatory foods, that does make a huge difference um, in how your body feels. Um, you can, you know, give up a sport like we were just talking about, like, oh, I was a runner, now I'm a walker, oh, now I'm a swimmer because I can't do any of those due to my pain. I had to give up my profession. A lot of people, clients of ours, doctors, dentists, hygienists, um, you know, really struggle nurses because they're lifting and rolling patients. So, you know, they have to give up their jobs, their sports, their things because they haven't addressed that underlying cause, that holistic approach of treating the posture, getting the alignment there um, so that they can build the strength on top of it. Um, and you can do all these quick fixes, you know, anytime, but it's not really getting to the root cause. So you kind of end up in this cycle of, you know, hey, I do the quick fix for a while. It helps for a little bit. And then, but my lifestyle hasn't changed. So I'm still doing the things that I was doing that created the poor posture to begin with. So you just end in this up in the cycle. You go to the gym, you work out, your posture align, um, um, imbalances get stronger and then you get into pain and then you have to stop working out and then you're just in this loop, right? 
So we've got to hop off that hamster wheel and we've got to get, you know, back to balance, back to better posture, right? And we talked about like everybody can pretty much identify with like, oh, that poor posture, you know, rounded forward. I mean, we see our kids like sit up straight. You remember your mom saying that or put the book on your head. I mean, I have even clients whose parents told them to do that. Some people may remember that putting that book on and walking straight and you know and sucking and tucking your belly in and those kinds of things right although we don't we don't promote sucking and tucking here we want you to let your belly hang out and breathe so you get a nice s curve in your spine but we'll talk about that when we get to the side side slide okay. um but balanced posture we're going to have you know the eight load bearing joints shoulders hips knees and ankles all level straight in line with each other pointing straight ahead with the knees, pointing straight ahead with the feet. Um, the, side, the arms hang at your sides with the thumb and the side of the pointer, feet, pointer finger straight, pointing straight ahead um, with a balanced head position between both shoulders, right? Your head is a six to eight pound, you know, bowling ball. It's, it's, it has weight, it's heavy, right? And if it's not sitting balanced above the shoulder girdle spine, on top of the spine, on top of level pelvis, and knees that point straight ahead and feet that point straight ahead, you know, it's gonna have a really hard time holding itself up properly. Cause there's really not many exercises you can do with the neck, right? And you can treat the neck pain and the neck discomfort all you want. You'll be limited in what you can do, um, but it really is dependent on everything from the shoulders down to support that head in the middle, right? Um, so that side posture, um, balanced side posture is ear, shoulder, hip, knee, and ankle all in a straight line. Your elbow and wrist are going to be on that straight line too. If those shoulders are pulled back and the scapula are down in position where they're supposed to be, right? And when the shoulders are down and back and the S curve in the spine is nice and curved like it should be, then it's going to hold that head up in position. But if your shoulders are rounded forward, your pelvis is out of position, your knees are bent or hyperextended backwards, there's all kinds of combinations, right, that people get into over a lifetime. Then again, that head position is going to come in front of that black line and be hanging there like suspended in time and space with a lot of strain and a lot of tension trying to hold that upright. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're gonna show some examples of some specific postural causes of neck pain. Um, there could be lots of things, but these are kind of the most common issues. We'll show a few um, on real people. So <clears throat> starting on the left here, elevated shoulder and hip, they usually go hand in hand. You can see on this guy, the, these horizontal lines, you can shows how his left shoulder is up higher than his right and his right pelvis is actually higher than his left. So there's kind of that, um, it's kind of like the right side is scrunched up and the left side is um, elongated. So, you know, there's a, probably a little bit of curve in his spine um, as well as a result. And so the head on top is now having to adjust to all that unevenness below it, right? Your, your head wants to find, your eyes want to find the horizon, right? your ears, your balance in your ears is affected by this. That's why a lot of vertigo can be caused by posture too, right? If your head's not sitting straight, then it's it kind of messes up your equilibrium, you know? Um, but this is an example of why, you know, a lot of neck pain or symptoms up here could be caused from your pelvis because if that pelvis is not level, the shoulders have to adjust and then the head has to adjust. So you have to look at the whole body. Uh, rounded shoulders, pretty common one. I mean, I don't know if I hardly see anybody anymore that doesn't have rounded shoulders to some extent. Uh, an easy way to see this when you're looking at posture is look at the front. Um, notice how her hands are kind of in front of her body and we can see her knuckles, the back side of her hand. The arms should be resting at the sides like Kelly talked about. So really only the thumb and first finger should be visible but her shoulders are so rounded or internally rotated, the arms are twisted inwards. So then we see the backs of the hands and you can see from the side too, how that shoulder is kind of forward, exposing all this part of her back and shoulder blade now. So um, forward head, pretty common one. It's obvious, like, I mean, remember that ear should be on the line. 
and this line starts down at the ankle as the as the base going up the ear should be back there so this guy's head's pretty far forward um quite a few inches there yeah i mean his head's not even touching it let alone his ear right so um usually associated with that we if we look further down we have what we call a sway back which is when the pelvis goes forward relative to the ankle so the pelvis kind of if you kind of push your belly out in front of you or push your pelvis forward um then the you know your whole body can't just tip forward like that you would fall over so your upper back is actually kind of like okay. leaning back almost right so this is behind the line and then the head goes forward so it's like a big zigzag hips are forward upper back is more rounded and kind of pulled behind the hips and then the head goes forward so once again if you were to just look at her neck and say oh her head's too far forward let's do some chin tucks or strengthen her neck muscles to pull her head back it's not really going to fix anything because her pelvis is still way out here um so we need to get the hips really to do their job and then the spine can be in a more natural curve and the head can be happy on top so just uh that's kind of how we look at um, neck issues so Now's your chance as audience members to participate a little bit. So I want you guys to either put it in the chat or unmute yourself and just tell me one or two things that you see with this guy. Um, and as far as what's different or what's less than ideal with his posture based on that description we gave earlier, what do you see that looks off? Or is he perfect? <laughs> Don't be shy. Unmute yourself. Somebody's got to know. Don't make me answer. <laughs> okay, took me a long minute. Sorry. Oh, good. I'm so glad. <laughs> so I'm starting at the bottom. Um, so I look at his knees. They don't look. One looks like it's bending back, and the other one's kind of coming forward. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's just something with the photo. Um, and they, I don't think they look very level. Neither do his hips. His hips don't look like they're on the same level to me. Uh -huh. Yeah, I would say this right hip is up a little high. And, and one of the things that makes it look different is he's also not centered, right? So that it's the line is centered at the bottom, but nothing else is, right? His whole body is kind of tipping to his left, right? So that that's why the knees, you know, um, are shifted over. This hip is higher. Yeah. What else? Anybody else want to chime in? We got uh, Shell says right side kind of scrunched up. Yeah, kind of like that first photo we showed. This right hip is high, but the right shoulder maybe a little low. So this whole mm -hmm. side. You can even look at the kind of the gap between his waist and his uh, arms look different side to side because of that. Probably. His feet are really narrow too. They're yes. um, like if I feel like if I went up to him and I hit him on the side of his arm to push him over, he would just topple right over because he's on a very like narrow center of body. Yeah, narrow and not even balancing over both feet. So he's basically standing on one leg, you know. Yeah. yeah. What else? How does that? How does that side view look? Yeah, Matt. Corey's already on it. She says heads forward, right hip is higher than left. Yeah. Somebody said, looks like he's leaning forward all the way from his ankles. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you can even see the strain on his neck muscles. Look at this uh, neck muscle kind of bulging there. <laughs> uh -huh. That just looks painful. Like we can predict where he's going to have pain. We don't, we don't need to talk to him. We can just say, oh, wow, that looks like it hurts. Have you ever seen people in public like that? I mean, I'm a posture therapist, so I kind of see that all the time. but. Um, but yeah, you can notice people in public and just go, oh, wow, that's got to hurt. Yeah. The amazing thing about the body is that it will do whatever you tell it to do. If your brain's telling the muscles, hey, we're doing this, climbing that mountain, it's going to configure the muscles to get you there, whether they're the right ones or the wrong ones at the right time or the wrong time, um, it'll do it. So, you know, that the body's amazing that way. Um, but over time, you know, it's going to wear and tear and break down when it's out of alignment. Um, if you just keep pushing it and pushing through it and making it do what it's supposed, what you need it to do, 
without rebalancing it. Like right. this guy did, right? Yeah, so same guy. Um, obviously, he did some work. He changed some things. Um, but what specifically, what do we notice uh, happened? What, what's different? Other than his shirt. back and forth. Is his head still a mile forward of the line? That's his ears actually pretty much right on the line there. So that looks much better. That second picture just looks like he feels better. I feel better looking at the second picture. I don't know how you guys feel about looking at the second picture versus the first picture. And he's got his uh, weight, looks like it's much more evenly distributed, right? He's more centered on that line. Michelle says his feet are farther apart. He looks very straight now, better balance. Head is much better aligned. He looks more alert and ready to move. You're right. Yeah, I mean, think about, Zach, go back to picture one. Think about how much energy the body expends trying to, to he's fit, he works out. He has muscle definition. This guy works out. Think of how much energy he wastes working out in this position versus the new position. Yeah, and someone mentioned losing weight. Um, you know, I don't think he actually lost any weight. I think he just looks like he did because here his pelvis is so far pushed forward. I mean, you can see his gut kind of pushing, hanging out a little bit. And because his shoulders are rounded and his chest is kind of collapsed, it just kind of it's not very flattering, right? It kind of scrunches up your belly, makes it stick out more. So when you have a more natural curve in your spine and your hips are back where they're supposed to be, I mean, it just looks better. You look thinner, um, regardless the of- The thing is where your fat lays in your body when you change your posture, because you get the, the right muscles doing the right things and fueling the metabolism. So the deep core posture muscles burn more calories as well. So they, they fuel the body. And when they're doing their job, then- you know, you, you will lose weight. It will help um, shape you in a different way because those are the big deep core posture muscles that you're supposed to be using. When you're using all the little tiny muscles that support the big muscles to do the big job, that's where you're getting into trouble and into pain because that's not their job long-term. So you get the burning, the aching, the, you know, all the things that a lot of people experience up in that upper neck shoulder area. They're working so hard in the, the picture one that they're just they're burning themselves out um, especially those people that you know sitting at their desk for two to you know plus hours a day six eight ten hours a day um, you know you're just not made to sit that long your body is a movement machine it's a lever and a pulley system from head to toe and we're the only upright biped that defies gravity in this way so you know when you're when you're machine is not properly aligned you cannot build strength on top of alignment that you don't have and that's where you get pain the body goes ah oh, you don't have enough alignment to you know withstand the level of demand and workload and weights that you're lifting on top of this body so we're going to let the body says okay we're going to let you know don't do that anymore because you don't have the right enough alignment to hold up that level of strength um so it's always a good indicator when that and check engine light goes on to state, hey, step back, take a break, reassess, look at your posture in the mirror, you know, and then do some Agoski exercises, get yourself back into alignment, modify what you're doing um, so that you don't exacerbate it and you don't just push through and then get yourself into real trouble. Yeah. So we'll show a couple other real life examples. This is going back to what Ms. Kelly was talking about. Yeah about younger people. So this client, I believe was 16 or 17 when I first started working with him. Um, on the top there, that was day one. And you can just see how, I mean, just really, <laughs> just about everything is is off here, right? Shoulders rounded, his feet aren't straight. Obviously he's really forward in his head and his knees are bent, his hips are look like they're kind of tucked under, just kind of sagging. So. I mean, this is the posture that's created when you spend your life on a computer, basically. So, and it's unfortunate that it's happening at a younger and younger age. But um, the good news is the younger you are generally, <clears throat> the easier it is to fix, right? You have less less um, time, less bad habits built up, right? So 
this was after just a few weeks. Um, you can see he's already looking much straighter. Still got a ways to go, right? His head's still forward, of course, but his shoulders look much better. Um, his back, his whole spine is just better aligned. So um, it can happen pretty quick. Uh, here's another young client with some scoliosis, just showing how, you know, once again, the neck is just at the top. And you can imagine because of these changes in her spine and lower body, um, that that's affecting her neck and you can see her neck is kind of crooked so you can have neck pain as a result of something below the neck right so much straighter now her neck looks a lot more balanced her shoulders are are more even her spine looks a little straighter so we work with a lot of clients with scoliosis everyone always asks well can you fix it can you correct the curvature i mean as an adult you're probably not gonna depending on how severe it is um you're probably not gonna ever have a perfectly straight spine, but the truth is you don't need to. Um, your body can deal with some amount of imbalance um, as long as you know the shoulders, the hips, the knees, the ankles, those big joints are doing their job. Um, you can still get away with you know not having a perfect body oh, yeah. <laughs> depending on how much demand you put on it, right? Yeah, but, I think it's false to think that you have to look at that perfect posture photo in order to be functional and feel better. That is not true. Um, as long as you're getting your muscles to work in a balanced way and support your body and continuing every day to remind it to be balanced and more aligned and work more together as a unit versus parts working separate from each other and kind of taking the body in all kinds of directions, then, um, you're going to have better balance, better alignment, more function um, all around. So another, um, granted an extreme example, but it's just to show that it's never really too late, even with really um, compromised postures like this, that your body can change, you know, you're not doomed uh, or stuck. Sometimes you see people like this and it's like, you may think, oh, wow, they're so far gone. Like, there's no hope, right? Well, I think there's always hope. <laughs> there's always an opportunity for you to change something um, as this woman did. Um, so, I mean, just imagine the stress on her neck um, and her back and her internal organs too. I mean, she's walking around basically halfway bent over. It's really restricting her ability to breathe and digest, right? So, I mean, this just- Heart like, functioning, yeah. So much better, so. Um, I feel like she'd be more susceptible to like respiratory infections, maybe, you know, um, constipation, um, you know, lots of things here um, that could go on as a result of poor posture. Okay, I think this is the last one. So just showing how we work with people all ages, you know, it's never too late or too early <laughs> to get started on improving your posture. This guy on the left, um, you know, pretty fit, worked out a lot, had a very physically demanding job, but he had lots of pain all over, you know, his neck, his back, his, his elbows. Um, and it was because his body was out of balance, you know, so he's got strong muscles, but strength is only going to benefit you so much if you're not in the right position, right? His uh, shoulders forward, I mean, his neck forward, his pelvis forward, you know, it's just, there's just a too much stress on the body uh, for what he was doing with his life. So um, same thing over here. So different age, obviously, but she's also very active hiker, photographer, and, um, you know, was starting to be limited because of her pain. But until she started, you know, doing the right exercises for her body to help bring it back to a balanced position, you can see how much healthier she looks and even younger, I think, right? She um, looks like 10, 20 years younger. Yeah, much better curve in her spine, more upright. Um, and remember, these are just, it's not a matter of just, oh, I need to forcefully yeah, show this yeah. back and think about yeah. my posture 24 seven, because that's not realistic, right? You might think about it every now and then and try to correct it, but ultimately your posture is in the position it is, like Kelly said, as a result of everything you've done in your life up until that point. So we have to just change what we're doing and you know, stimulate our bodies a little differently with the exercises to change that muscle memory. And that'll change, you know, this is a resting posture. This isn't forced, right? So 
All right, so we're gonna try do a little um, um, experiment, I guess you would say, and let you guys let you guys feel. We're gonna let you experience it. Yeah, cool. um, let me stop my share. Okay, so if you're wearing shoes, ideally you do this without shoes. Socks are okay, um, barefoot is best, but um, uh, you can do it in shoes if you have to. If you're at work or something, you don't want to take your shoes off. But um, stand up. Uh, Maybe shake it out a little bit if you've been sitting. Just uh, try to find what you feel is your natural standing position. So no cheating here. Just go to what you feel is your normal. Okay. Um, close your eyes if you if you can, um, just so we can focus in on what we're feeling. And I want you to do a little assessment of how your feet feel right now. So specifically, where do you feel the pressure on the bottoms of your feet? You might notice one side feels heavier than the other, or maybe you feel like it's more on the front half of your feet or on the back on the heels. You might notice um, the arch of your foot on one side more than the other. Just kind of pay attention to where where is the my weight or pressure uh, landing right now. So anybody care to share? Put it in the chat or unmute yourself. I'm just curious because uh, everybody's a little different. I know for me, I feel my left ankle is more pronated, so I feel my Left, the arch of my left foot is flatter on the ground. I can feel that. Anybody feel um, something different from one side to the other? Jenny, I'm gonna pick on you. <laughs> you seem like you're intuitive. I was closing my eyes trying to get out there. So anyway, um, I think when I don't think about how it's end, tend to put a lot of weight on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. And when you tell me to be conscious about it, then I agree. Yeah. And there's a little bit of the same like right underneath my foot, but it's not right now, thankfully, it's not that bad. But that's not normal for me. I always almost always have foot pain. Uh, when I go out for or whatever, I, I'm constant. I put some more products in there. I do all sorts of products to avoid um, pain in my feet. And um, so, but for some reason today, it's not hurt. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else feel maybe more on the front of their feet or more on their heels? There's no right or wrong answer here. I'm just looking to Sides, outside, front, back, right, left. Corey, what do you got? Yeah, I definitely feel it more on my right side than my left, and kind of almost like on the balls of my feet, like I'm falling forward. Um, and that's kind of consistent with the with the computer picture you took. Uh, <laughs> but I did never really noticed um, by doing this. Yeah, this is a really good kinesthetic awareness test to actually drop you out of your head and get into your body and what is happening, right? Get open and curious and be the detective of your own body so that you can start to become the expert of your own situation, right? So really we're just doing this, like Kelly said, to give you a chance to assess. Um, we can't take everybody's posture photos right now, but this is just a quick way that you can assess yourself. It's just because ideally, if you think about the ideal posture we talked about, you know, the weight would be distributed evenly on both feet. So you'd feel the same thing on the right as the left, which would be basically resting on the balls of your feet and the heels evenly. So front to back should be 50-50 roughly. Um, inside right the outside edge should be, should be pretty even. So anything that's different than that just tells you, okay, my body's in a different position. It's putting the weight in a different spot. You know, and we're going to try some exercises right now and then test it again so that hopefully you can feel how quickly it can change. So, um, Kelly, you want to take us through the, the three exercises? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. So the first one we're going to do is called standing at the wall. So, or the back of a door, you can shut a door or stand at the wall and, um, oh, hi, Anne. Now I'm with you, Anne. I, you chatted and I was like, and I see you now. I see you. Hello, my dear. Okay. <clears throat> um, so you're going to stand with your back to the wall and make sure that your feet, I'm going to actually move my computer. Take you guys with me here for a minute. 
Okay. You're gonna stand with your feet hip width and parallel. I have to keep scooting you back here. And make sure that those feet are exactly six inches apart, which means a tight two double fist right from front to back and or a six inch pillow between your feet. feet yep. And then you're going to put your back of your head, the back of your shoulders, the back of your bum and your heels touching the wall. And you're just gonna let your arms relax wherever they relax at. And then I want you to just relax your belly muscles and breathe into your nose. Big deep belly breath. I will say uh, just a quick note here. If you can't get your head comfortably to the wall, don't force it, okay? Because if your head is really far forward to begin with, you might notice it's hard to reach the wall or you might feel like you're tipping back and your chin is up. So we don't really want to do that. So just keep your head, yeah, just keep your head kind of in a straight but relaxed position. Eventually it, it'll get to the wall, but don't we don't want to force it today, okay? You don't want to have your chin sticking out further than your forehead. You want to keep it neutral along the wall. So if you can't get your head there, don't worry. Just get all the points that you can. Heel, thumb, shoulder. If head doesn't match, great. That's okay. Leave it where it is. Just get the other three points on. This is a really good balance and alignment test for you too. You can kind of check in while you're here breathing. Is one butt cheek you know, pressing into the wall more than the other? Is one shoulder blade off the wall more than the other? Is one calf muscle touching the wall more than the other? Um, and just standing here, how hard is it to stand here in alignment? What muscles get tired, right? Are your calves getting tired, your shins, your hips, your shoulders, your head, neck? Like what's, what's, you know, what's getting tired here? What's working? What's not working? Okay. And you want to hold this at home for a good about maybe one to two minutes. And, you know, big deep breaths in through your nose, rise up your belly full of air, exhale through your mouth. Let your arms hang at their sides. Just relax the shoulders and breathe. I doubt you're going to be able to relax your legs, though. They're going to be working pretty hard here to hold you upright because they're not used to this. They're not used to being underneath the spine, underneath the shoulders, underneath the head and neck equally and having to work in a balanced way. So you may feel hip work you know quads like i said calf muscles feet okay yeah does right. anybody feel like that was more challenging than it looked you know is it harder feeling any strain to stand against the wall it's normal yeah, raise your hand if you felt like that standing at the wall was way harder than it seemed yeah or you can come on and unmute yourself kind of just I was having a hard time with my neck until I relaxed my shoulders down. I could feel my shoulder blades coming closer together and then my neck stopped hurting. Yeah, before, yeah, so. I was like when, using neck to hold everything down. Oh yeah, you're gonna use those upper trap muscles and everything and then when you relax and you actually start breathing with that belly breath it's going to pull that arch into your low back and when you have the proper s curve in your low spine your shoulder blades will actually fall right down over that curve down and together all by themselves right where they need to be and relax everything into position so just standing there, like I said, putting as many of the points of the four points as you can on the wall comfortably and just breathing will let those shoulders go right where they need to be. Okay. Awesome. Noticing. Great job. Way to be curious and, and Hey, you, you figured something out, right? I love it. Okay. And so all these exercises that we're going to teach you, you can do throughout your day as many times of the day as you need. Zach, are you going to take the next one? Um, I can demonstrate if you want to talk through it. 
Okay, great. So the next exercise is sitting in extension and you're gonna need a little pillow to put between your knees or a shoe box turned sideways, a yoga block, um, whatever you've got there, or take a pillow off your couch and fold it in half and put it between your knees so that they're hip width and make sure your feet are hip width too. Whenever you're doing Agoscu exercises, remember we're training good posture. So we wanna take, even if your feet turn out, right? Are not straight during the exercises, we want them straight. So we can use tools like yoga blocks and shoe boxes turned sideways, you know, six inch width of, of a block. Um, you put that between your feet if they're on the ground and then between your knees here so that um, everything's straight and aligned and parallel and pointing straight ahead, okay? And you can see how his knees are at a 90 degree angle his, the middle of his knee is right above his ankle bone, the outside ankle bone, right? 90 degrees at the knee. And then his hips are also gonna be at 90 degrees. So his shoulders are gonna be above his pelvis. And he's gonna put like a little arch into his low back. So he's gonna sit up nice and tall and put his weight onto his butt bones in his seat equally, which means you kind of let your belly button hang out and down over your thighs. You're just putting that little arch into your back, but you're relaxing the belly. Um, and then he's gonna hold on to that pillow and lift his heels up off the ground onto his toes and then rock back onto his heels and lift his toes. And you're gonna go heel to toe, heel to toe, heel ball toe, heel ball toe and just rock back and forth, then back and forth. Now, the trick with this one is to keep the shoulders above the hips and that arch into your low back and the 90 degree angles at the hip and the knee while you're doing the rocking and holding on to the pillow at the same time. And it doesn't need to be a strong squeeze. I mean, you wanna put some pressure there, but you're not trying to crush it. You just wanna, and that's to engage some muscles in your hips and inner thighs. You should feel that kind of in here. Yeah, maybe 10% of your total strength holding that pillow between the knees. Now, if you're experiencing any strain or pain or, you know, aches or whatever during these exercises, that's okay. That's actually feedback from your body saying, huh, let's look at things more holistically standing against the wall. If your back was arched and your chest was tipped up, then standing at the wall might be too much for you right now. Your posture can't handle standing on a straight line yet. So other exercises that you would need to do before that may be things laying on the ground. And then you do things on the ground for a while, get the posture in better alignment, and then use standing at the wall as a test to see if your posture is getting better over time, right? So I'm answering Raj's question. So this sitting rocking chair, um, you know, you're going to be heel ball toe, heel ball toe, keeping all those points, that nice arch in your low back, relax your belly and breathe, relax your shoulders and breathe. And then again, if you're feeling something, you know, activate or some discomfort, I mean, you can try to modify it a little bit if you need to. But again, this, you know, it may not, this may not be the right exercise for you for where your posture is at, for where your alignment is at. This is, Agoski was not a one size fits all, but in these workshops, we just kind of give um, exercises that we think would be the best fit for what the symptom, the neck pain and everything that's going on. And then everything that people put into the chat, right? Um, but when we take individual situations, it's, it's different. Okay, so then the next exercise is sitting and same hip width position. And then you're gonna keep your feet and your knees hip width and parallel and straight. Same arch into the low back, 90 degrees at the hips, 90 degrees at the knees. And then you're gonna imagine you have a little rubber um, ball between your shoulder blades and you're gonna squeeze that rubber ball and then release it squeeze and release, squeeze and release. So pull those shoulders down and together like they're gonna go into your back pockets. Yeah, we don't wanna do this. We're not squeezing up and scrunching yep. up. 
So. You're going to have a longer neck. Your shoulders are going to go down your spine and together, right? Mm -hmm. Down and back. So these are easy ones that you can do, even if you're at, if you're, let's say you're working from home or you're on a computer, you can do some of this stuff even while you're sitting there in a Zoom meeting, right? Yeah. This, so sitting in this position gets your pelvis underneath your spine and your shoulders, right? Which most people with neck pain don't have their shoulders and their hips and their spine in alignment. So the exercise we've given you, the standing at the wall, the sitting, that starts to teach the alignment process that needs to be in place to help support that head and neck, okay? But you've got to start with the basics, like standing properly, sitting properly, right? In order to be able to do more big movement things. Okay. And you know, with the repetitions for those, listen to your body. We say about 30 scapular contractions and about, you know, anywhere from 40 to 60, you know, heel ball toe um, with the pillow between the knees and then standing at the wall for maybe one to three minutes, but really listening to your body and letting it tell you, is this right for me? How long do I need to stand here? Um, is my body balanced when I'm here? The longer I stand here, does it get more balanced? Oh, it does. Oh, great. So then you know, this is good for me. And when I do the knee pillows or the rocking chair, um, is it equal work, you know, rocking the feet, heel, ball, toe, you know, and try to get them equal range of motion, equal workload. Like that's what you're working on, trying to get the balance back into the body. Same with the scapular contraction. When you pinch those shoulder blades down and together, are they pinching equally and evenly? Or are they, you know, doing different things at different times? Like that's your cue to, oh yeah, okay, I found the imbalance. Now I'm going to cue in on it and work on it and train that balance back into the body again. And it's really good. Like we are your mirrors and, but at home use mirrors, sit next to the mirror so that you can see yourself and your alignment or have someone in your household who lives with you um, or is there on a regular basis, check you and say, Hey, how's my posture look when I do this? Is, am I in 90 degrees? Am I in good alignment? Because the more aligned you are when you do the exercises, the better you set yourself up, the more results you're gonna get over time. It's quality over quantity. You don't need to do a hundred. It's let's get feet straight, hip width, parallel, 90 degree angles. That's where the deep core posture muscles work and get reinforced to hold up the posture in the right position and support your body the way that it should be to give you more function, okay? <laughs> So, um, what's the next step? Well, I hope that you guys uncovered some, what I call like Easter eggs or gems today, just by, you know, the weight distribution test that we did and maybe trying on these three exercises that we tried on today. They either felt good. They didn't, you felt more balanced. You didn't, I mean, it's all feedback. It's all information that we take in and then, you know, say, okay, I, I, now I need to know more. I need to figure out, well, what I need to get my posture photos taken, right? Everybody would love to see their posture photos if they haven't seen them already. I mean, it's just a great way for you to get a real big holistic picture of what is going on with your body and how you can start to intervene and get the right posture exercises to treat your muscle imbalances, right? So some people, you know, they might still be skeptical. Um, and they're not quite sure like if this is for them or um, I just need to know more. Well, great, you know, there's five, six books now that Peter Agoscu has written. You know, our company has been around for 50 plus years. Um, so there's tons of information out there. YouTube channels, uh, our YouTube channel, Agoscu Portland and Agoscu Seattle has all of our webinars on there. You can watch for various different pains and postures, lots of different exercises. Um, so there's lots of good information out there, but the pain-free book is always what people go back to. It's if you have pain here, do this. So good information there. But most of the people who came here today probably have done those things, have looked online, and they still are in pain 
or just don't have the right tools for their own specific body and they need some more guidance, which is most of the calls that I get. I've had the book, I've done the book. I've for 20, 10 years, I've done the book. Um, you know, and I need something more specific for my situation. That's every call I get. That's, that's what we're talking about. Um, and so, you know, I think the biggest question is, well, can you help me right with my posture, with my situation, with my problem? And I always turn it around to you. Well, do you have muscles? Then we can help. Are you willing to do exercises on a daily basis consistently to change your posture over time and make the shift in the posture and the alignment? Great. And, um, you know, perfect. Then, then you're in the right time, right place at the right time. Okay. So, um, that's where we come in and we say, okay, come in for your first session. We'll do an hour and a half session. We do a posture evaluation. We do posture photos, gait analysis, functional muscle testing to find out where your muscle imbalances are. Um, and we can do that in person or virtual on zoom or Skype or FaceTime, whatever you have. And we've worked all over the world for 20 years. We've been doing virtual therapy forever, way before most people were. Um, so, um, we're very skilled at it and, um, we do the full posture evaluation and then we work together with you and your body to customize and tailor exercises to fit your imbalances and your specific situation, right? We're not treating, you know, Sally who has the same pain and maybe similar posture, but did something totally different than you for her lifetime than you did. Um, with the same exercises. It's, it just doesn't, it's not how it goes here. Okay. Everybody is different. Um, but we all have muscles, so there's hope, right? Um, so, uh, you can come in and we can do a posture evaluation for, for a complimentary one. If you'd like, they take about 15 to 30 minutes. We take your virtual pictures or your in-person pictures, and we'll show them to you and tell you about, Hey, this is what we recommend going forward. This is how many sessions we think you might need to reach your goals and to shift the posture. Um, so, you know, and then you can also come in and have your first session, like I said, for an hour and a half. If you're ready to start and make that transformation and start your journey now, you're tired of trying to figure it out on your own through books and videos and whatever, and you're still in pain, then don't wait. Give us a call. <laughs> I can't tell you, like, the biggest piece of feedback I get from people is, I wish I would have known about you before X, before I had the surgery or before I had done these things and spent all this money and did all these other things. So, um, yeah, so don't wait. Suffering's optional. That's my, my biggest motto that I teach and I embody at the highest level. Like there's just no need to suffer. And so Zach and I are here for questions. We'll take questions. And then also after the webinar, if you have questions and you need answers, maybe you didn't want to talk on the screen because you're shy or you don't, you want to speak out in the crowd or whatever, that's okay. You just email us directly, call us, you know, we're here for you. We want to help. So we want you to have a plan going forward, whether it's in the book, on uh, online videos that are on YouTube, or you're coming in and you're getting your posture assessed and you're getting going, you're getting started on your program. I know we have several people here today who've already been in. There's some people who have been in, had their posture photos taken, gotten results, and I see them. I know who they are. So, um, you're in good company here. Yeah. So does anybody have any questions right now? Anything we can answer? Don't be shy. This is your time. Get your questions in. Insurance cover it. Um, typically not. Um, the exception is health savings accounts or flex spending accounts can usually be used. Um, but otherwise, we're not we're not technically medical. You know, we're not doctors or physical therapists or, you know, um, insurance doesn't really recognize EGOSCU. The benefit of that, of course, is that yeah, we can we can actually spend a lot more quality time one on one with each client, um, and we can actually treat their entire their all their needs, right? Not just what insurance dictates. So. Um, but yeah, it, it means, uh, no insurance coverage. So. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I think if there's anything that causes pain when you do it and it causes pain after or you feel worse after you do it, it's probably not the right thing for you. At that time, There, you need to um, modify it. You need a different approach. Um, I think that's, you know, I get that a lot. People have been in other um, realms of, you know, exercise or PT or um, other things. And, you know, what they were doing, they were in that cycle, that wheel, they were getting hurt. And, you know, it was too much workload, too much strain, too much strength, but they didn't have the alignment. So you've just got to get that alignment under um, as the foundation first before you can put the strength on top of it. Yeah, I think in general, there's not like, I don't believe there's such thing as like bad exercise or no, bad, bad movements. It's just whether your body is in a position to do it or not. Yeah. Um, and so that's where people come into problems is, you know, they go to a yoga class or CrossFit or they go running or whatever, name the activity, you know, people blame their pain on that. <laughs> but it's really, it's not the activity's fault. It's that the body they brought to the activity was not balanced enough or functional enough. And so you, you ended up getting hurt because you're overworking some areas or mm -hmm. something's not doing what it's supposed to. And that's really the problem. If everything, if your body was completely functional, you know, think about when you were a kid and you could literally do anything you put your mind to, right? And you may get hurt, but then you just bounce right back, right? Um, because we were a lot more functional when we were younger usually. So, um, Marnie asked if we work over Zoom all the time. Yeah, so I mean, I've got every clients. day, like a quarter of my days online. Yeah, I'd say about twenty-five percent of my sessions are on Zoom now. So, and it was even higher during the pandemic. Oh know? God, all my clients went to Zoom. Yeah, so yeah, it works really well. You know, as long as we can see you and you can see us, and um, we even take posture photos over the Zoom and we load them into our computer program and put the um, gravity lines on them, like we had with the people on the grid earlier from the uh, balanced posture photos, we actually superimpose that onto your body so you get to see it. And then we screen share with you so that you can look at them while we're looking at them, we can discuss them and we talk all about it. Yeah, and I love being in other people's homes on Zoom because then I can see what they're using and what is in your environment at home so that you can be really confident and comfortable at home replicating the exercises um, that we do in here, right? Got a oh. for Kelly. Anne says, my very injured knee healed uh, spectacularly from following a course of exercises Kelly guided me through. I'm profoundly grateful. Now it's time to go to the next level. Great. Yes, yes. And there are three levels. There's the restoring the posture. You gotta restore the alignment before you can build the strength on top of it. And then you've got to work the strength. The strength's got to match the level of alignment that your body has. And then you're thriving, you're off and running and you can pretty much do whatever you want, which is like Zach and I, right? So, um, so yeah. And, and there's always going to be a next level unless you're like, you know, happy just being status quo. I don't know. Or happy just being in a little bit of pain or happy just not doing what you really want to do like keep digging keep doing the work stay consistent keep asking questions be open and curious like what is out of alignment what is working what isn't working what exercises do i feel like are going to help you know who do i need to schedule another appointment right um, have things shifted in my body? Has my goal changed? Do I have old pain that came back? Do I have a new pain from a new injury, right? Those are all indications that you got to come in, get a reassessment and get a new program. Like you can't keep the same exercises from now until the end of your life because your body's constantly taking in stimulus from your environment. Things are changing. So you want to keep changing with the body and stay on top of, um, your, your body as it changes with the exercises over time. Mm -hmm. Well, great questions, everybody. Thanks for your participation. Any last uh, comments before yeah. we Specific questions? Again, feel free to email us or call us. We put our emails in the chat, seattleatagoski.com or portlandatagoski.com or kellyatagoski.com, right? Thank you, Raj. Thanks for coming. 
Corey, good to see you. And so great to see you too. Thanks for the shout out. 